hello guys welcome to my youtube channel it is victor once again it's another day and we have another scholarship if you're joining us for the first time thanks for coming but where have you been there are hundreds of videos on this channel already on fully funded scholarships from around the world so look around i'm sure you find something that catches your interest and if you're a returning viewer a returning subscriber Thanks for coming back and I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So today we are traveling down to Canada to Gulf University or University of Gulf in Canada in search of fully funded graduate opportunities that's for masters and PhD. So these scholarships are worth um, different amounts of money depending on the scholarship you're applying for. And I'll also be talking to you about this particular one the Arrow Scholarship or the Arrow Food Institute Scholarship, which is worth, as you can see on your screen, 50,000 Canadian dollars. And by the way, just to tell you that someone got the scholarship for my channel this year and actually last year as well. So two people from this channel, I think even three, have won the scholarship in the past. This was the recipient this year, earlier this year. So it means we have a record we have an antecedent of actually winning scholarship at this university so who knows we might just double the number by this time next year so that and that's actually so let's let's talk about scholarships at um, Gulf University in Canada so let's quickly look at the applications requirements first and um, that's the general applications requirement. So usually you need like a, a bachelor's degree if you're applying for a master's or master's degree if you're applying for a PhD and um, good enough degree, usually a 2-1 usually. And if you have work experience, that's also good. But particularly, we'll be looking at the English language test requirements. So do you need to write any of those English language tests like the IELTS or the TOEFL? Well, it's stated here that in, if the English language is not your first language, it means you have to take one of those standardized tests. However, if your first language is not English, but you have completed um, prior post secondary studies in which English was the language of instruction, then you wouldn't have to present an English language test. So it means if you're not like the traditional English speaking countries, but you studied uh, a bachelor's degree in an English speaking country or with English as the language of instruction it is very likely the case that it will be waived for you and i think this is going to be a relief for those a number of you who have already studied in the english language but not from traditionally an english-speaking country so we got that sorted um the number of courses there are a range of courses here at this university you can see from accounting to bioinformatics biology you have chemistry you have um, economics english french arts politics and the rest of them so it's a very long list here and i'm sure that you find something on this list that catches your interest you can always tweak your interest if there's no course on this list that um, suits you but it's a very long list so i'm sure you would be interested in something here so how do you find a scholarship let's go to the the multi um, dollar question how do you find a scholarship here so this is the scholarship data base or the search profile on the university website i'll be leaving a link to this in the description box below and then you can play around with the filter function to give you the opportunities that suit you particularly so for citizenship i'll just go for non-canadian for application um this means do you need a different application for the scholarship or should it be embedded within the application for the course so i'll leave it blank so to open our options, financial need, I also leave that blank. Then yeah, college. For college, it means what faculty do you intend to study? And these things you see here are privations of the different faculties, like arts, well, that's, that's intuitive. Arts, the faculty of art. What about CBS, what does it mean? Well, you can get a very quick view of these privations. You can get their meanings by going here. I believe it's here. Yes, you can see College of Arts. So you have arts. So the CBS we saw earlier is College of Biological Sciences. There's also CBE, that's um, College of Business and Economics. There's another one for engineering, one for 
social and human applied human sciences agriculture veterinary college so now you know like the approbation for your for your area of discipline like i mean the social science for instance i'll go for this one i think this is for social science and um humanities i think yeah that's what it says here but i'll leave it open just to um get a broad range of the scholarships here then the level is it for a master's phd master's diploma so i'll go for masters and then click on the search icon and see what comes out so if you look very closely there are varieties of scholarships here and the amounts differ depending on the scholarship so this is um, ten thousand and um, that's for masters and twenty thousand for a phd if you click on this link it will tell you exactly how to apply so whether you're considered automatically for the scholarship or if you need to put in a different application so meaning that do you have to apply separately for the course and then come back here separately for the scholarship or is just one application sufficient so that's the information you get when you actually click on the link and read the description of the scholarship so that's what you're going to be doing yourself as you know, there are several scholarships here already, and we cannot go through them one after another. So it means you do your own due diligence and check. Here you already have like a, a snippet of what the scholarship is all about. Then if you think it's relevant to your area of interest, then click on it and read through and see the method of application. So there are a number of them here, different amounts. Look at the Ario Food Institute scholarship we talked about already. And you can see the amount here. 50,000. This scholarship in in um to be particular is for those who intend to apply for courses in the agricultural field, food technology, sustainability, things about environment, animal um care, animal husbandry and things like that. You can always go here, click on this link. You get a summary about the scholarship what it's all about. This is quite um it's quite a bit of a lot of words on the on the on the website but click on this then it takes you to the actual page of the scholarship then you get a full view of what they're looking for and of course you can go to scholarships here and see the deadline of this scholarship is february 20 um, the 22nd of february 2024 and the amount is here and the kind of scholars they're also looking for is also here. The frequently asked questions section is also here. So if you're into agriculture, sustainability, environment, animal care, um, food security, I think this is what you should apply for. And by the way, I recognize about two, three faces here on this list. Yeah, Faith actually is from this YouTube channel. Um, Anna is also from the YouTube channel. China Zai, I know her. She's a good friend on social media. She was an Erasmus Mundo scholar who moved to um canada and to this university so what i'm showing you this profile because i want you to also probably reach out to them as well so if you have a similar area of interest you want to um, get in contact and ask questions why not also check your profile and see how you can um contact them directly and ask them particular questions so you can always um click on the profile and see if you can contact anna um, directly if there's no email address here of course you can always look for them up on social media on linkedin and other um, social media platforms so there you go you can always contact um, existing and um, current students taking this program so let's move on there are all other kinds of scholarships as i said the amounts differ you can see the smaller ones here as well that might help you add up to these bigger ones of like 50 000, 20 000, 40 000 and the rest so look at them very closely and see which one catches your interest. So there's this other one, 25,000, and it's called um, the CSAHS. I think this is for um, Applied Social Sciences. And it covers your master's tuition of up to 25,000 Canadian dollars. So check, check. So you have to do like your own due diligence. And see, it's a very long list, and I think we have over a hundred of them of these kinds of scholarships. So, see the ones that apply to you, and then go to the department and see the application requirements as well. So, look at the departments we checked earlier. I can always go there and see how to apply the applications requirements and what they need. For a number of these departments, 
you can see them here it's also good to go to the particular department page so let's go there and see so this is department page for animal science for both phd and msc so you read through what they do and then how to apply you can always check there how to apply one important thing as well that might not be mentioned here is whether you should contact um, um, a professor in the department or not. So some departments will say it very clearly, others would not. So it's good to read the instructions. And if you're not clear, if you're not sure, always contact somebody in the department, whether the department secretary or the head of department to ask them, well, I'm not sure, do I need to get the approval of a professor if I can proceed? And most times the answer is yes, especially for a number of Canadian universities. So I think for this department, it was actually stated here. So it says contact the faculty member you are interested in working with to discuss potential research opportunities. We recommend connecting via email. So it was stated here, you have to contact somebody in this department if you're interested in applying. And by the way, let's go back to the Ariel Food Scholarship. For this scholarship as well, you would need somebody in the department who is working in a similar area. So if you read this through, the applications requirements through very closely, you will see the instructions. They require actually, they require you to get somebody in the department working on an area of research that you're interested in. So please check this on your own. So we're doing like a quick, a quick um, overview of all the scholarships. You cannot go in details in all of them. But if you sit down, the instructions are already written there actually, look at them. Just sit down and read and you'll be fine with the deadlines and the procedures, the step one or part one and part two. Everything is written here. For the Ariel um, Food Scholarship, you might have to apply differently for one of the eligible courses in the relevant areas and then return to this website to apply for the scholarship. So scholarship application different from application for one of the courses. So I think the idea here is actually for you to just sit down check for the scholarship that um, that relates to your area of interest you can see the very long list here the list goes on and on and on and on so we'll just use the filter function let's go back up there let's do this very quickly use the filter function choose the college that catches your interest and it might help you reduce your search a little bit more so choose the college and then see the different scholarships that you're entitled to then go to them one by one and see if you need a special application for any of them or whether you're considered automatically for them immediately you apply then see what they require and then proceed to apply as i said i already checked the english language requirements and it says you can get a waiver if you already studied in the english language one thing i've not mentioned here is the application fees most canadian universities require application fees and yet it is um, 120 canadian dollars it is not as high as the us dollars so it might be a little bit yeah it's lower than the us dollars but it's still a bit of a problem for a number of people i, I recognize that but there's hardly anything you can do about it unfortunately there is hardly um application fee waivers for a number of um, canadian universities that's unfortunately the case but i hope you're able to raise the money because um it might just unlock the numerous opportunities that you need in the first place. So I hope this was useful, guys. I will leave a link, of course, to this um, scholarship database for you. So you can always go through and see the one that relates to your own area of interest. And, um, of course, explore, and I wish you good luck. As usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. There are several scholarships already on this channel. So apart from the one we looked at today in Canada, of course, you have scholarships in the UK, in Sweden, in Finland, in the Netherlands, in the US. So look around. I'm sure there are many more scholarships you can apply for. Who knows? You might just get three, four, five, six scholarships at once, and you'll be in that wonderful um, situation where you have to choose and pick the one that has the best offer. So as usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. Get to work is getting to the end of the year. So hopefully we'll be opening 2024 with lots of um, very strong applications and lots of hope that these applications will come into fruition with interest and funding. As usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. Get to work and I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.